two weeks ago that they can't win three to zero. And Keck, I want to talk about the matchup here that I'm most excited about as a top laner. It's top lane, of course. We right. have Lucent going up against Chicken Delivery. And we are already in pick ban, so I will have to talk about the matchup when they lock their champions in. But we see Evelyn getting banned already, Lilia two AP junglers, and Chicken Delivery is going to get Gangplank. This is really important. Gangplank has been banned for most of the league for York University. University, and they're getting some power picks here. The Gangplank, Zach, and Cassiopeia. I actually really like this uh, one, two, three lock in on the red side here. A oh, Wukong, first time we've seen this from Lucent. A oh, Graves TF comp. Those two champions work pretty well uh, together as well. So, what do you think here as we kind of catch up to this draft? So, as we see here, like York University has opted for the GP first pick. GP as a champion is just really, really good when it comes to dodging aggression, being on the weak side of the map, scaling up to late game, being that menace with the late game barrels, critting and doing massive amounts of AoE team damage to the enemy comp. And if what we see here from Miami Redhawks, they actually are adapting to that GP pick. They went for the Wukong, which is an aggressive laner, a champion that wants to fight non-stop early levels one through six, even afterwards. He scales extremely well too with massive, with lots of utility for his team, clone, ultimate, massive knockups all rounds in team fights. We also see Graves, Another really strong farm-based jungler, carry champion, does tons of damage as well. And we see the, twi the twisted bait pick, something I also really, really like. Because we see that York University is opting for the GP. They want to play weak side top. They want him to be able to be solo, independent, scaling up to late game. Well, Miami's like, okay, we'll take you up on that. We're going to draft the TF. We're going to tap, draft the aggressive top lane pick. We're going to dive you nonstop. We're going to be fighting top side, and we're not going to let you scale. But, Keck, the orange into the Twisted Fate yellow card, it's too good, isn't it? It is, but as you see here, there's also the Wukong Ultimates. So they actually have tons of CC to fight back against the GP. The GP orange actually doesn't work on knockups. So if we see how it plays out, yeah, the orange can only do so much for him. As a Wukong player, though, they took a whole second away from the CC of those knockups. When Wukong was first reworked, he knocked you up in the air for, I think, a whole second. <laughs> and now it's just a half second each time. So I think, personally, if Chicken Delivery is fast on his feet, he can duck a lot of the Twisted Fate uh, attack. And I think Troy might actually look to go bot lane to set his Kai'Sa up with the Nautilus. And get <laughs> onto the Rift. For day one, round one of the League Saturday Series playoffs, brought to you by One Life to Play, powered by Monster. We have York University, the fourth seed here, with Chicken Delivery in the top lane, Fairpire in the jungle, Luigi Mash, mid Laser King at AD, and Aluros on support. And we might already have some action with a level one Cleve looking for a hook. We'll find a flash on Chicken Delivery, and we'll have to see if they revisit that in the next five minutes. For Miami University, who is not seven and three, they have loosened in the top lane. Mayamo, Big D in the jungle. Big night grants, by the way. Cut. Troy one hand on Twisted Fate, Bien on Kaisa, and Cleve on Nautilus. And after a nice topside invade, they will spot out Chicken Delivery, and uh, with the threat of gold card, will get his flash. Now we're watching for any more level one shenanigans in these teams. Something I really do like about the Ignite Graves, you don't see it very often in competitive, but it's actually a really strong rune because it lets the Graves be aggressive. Like Graves himself, as a champion, is already extremely mobile. He has the E, he has the quick draw, two dash over walls. It's effectively like a flash. And Graves takes Nimbus Cloak. Which is a really powerful summoner rune right now because it takes advantage of your summoner spells. Plus, both Ignite and Smite are relatively short cooldowns. So, if Graves really wants to stick to someone, he just presses a summoner spell and he just sticks to them. Not to mention, Ignite does pretty good damage. Another thing here, Keck, what is there to flash from York University's comp other than Zach E uh, flashes useless against Cassiopeia? So, if you're in that Miasma, you probably would rather have Ignite as we see Lucin. Taking an aggressive level 1 trade. I think GP will win the battle of attrition in the top lane, but Wukong, not a bad matchup given that he can stack armor with attacks and abilities. And uh, Gangplank is flashing as well. Cleave looking for some aggression down in the bot lane, hits from level 2, goes for the uh, Nautilus Q, but not able to find a mark so far. So early on in this matchup top lane, GP does kind of just win, because he does have that advantage with the grass procs, with the parlay. So he's able to just farm up HP, farm up free damage, and Wukong really can't do too much until he levels up a bit more. Right, and the level 6 all in from Wukong can kill GP. I've done it many times, and I guarantee.
guarantee Lucent is very capable. I can also guarantee Chicken Delivery is aware of that little situation, so he's not in his matchup. He's on trading into a ton of minions. It's a gank. But no I'm a big D is up here. Loons some damage on the Chicken Delivery. Pops the Ignite. Ignite taken down, but Chicken Delivery is not going to drop. First Blood is not going to be going over, over to Miami. And if you wanted to, another thing I wanted to point out here is that uh, it looks like York Esports had no idea that Miami was opting for the vertical jungle on the top side. As you see, Brandon started his red button and then he invaded and completely took Zach's jungle. And let's look at the bot Here we have a 2v2 here. Ignite taken down onto Aelorus while the rest of Laser King is trying to do some damage back. But it looks like it's going to be a win overall to the bot lane of Miami. Flash and heal burnt for the bot lane of York. You're right, Cleve. I was actually looking at this jungle and trying to see which camp stick Grave take on the way top. It was clever, creative, and opportunistic pathing for the Graves to go invade the Zac and also get a gank off on the Flash. Chicken delivery able to escape this time. And I anticipate a Graves farm lead, but it might come down to Zac and Graves being on the same side of the map right now. We'll have to see if there's any uh, contestion. We're contesting these jungle camps here from Zach, as he has nowhere else to go right now other than maybe a gank or, uh, right. or his Krugs just respawn. And as you see right now, Zach, because he didn't have the intel that Graves invaded him to force that vertical jungle, Zach was too late to go to that bot site to try to take the enemy blue buff. So in this case, you saw him go for the scuttle cram, but at that point, Graves probably already reset. Graves could be there. And look at your ball, and you were completely shoved in. He has no opportunity to, in this case, respawn to that vertical jungle and now Graves is going to be triple buffing him. Triple buff on Graves is a really scary thing. It's, it's, uh, it's the jungle meta. You get power farming junglers who can cycle multiple quadrants and if they can counter jungle and split the map and, and their, their lanes can push and help them invade camps, you can get a level lead that can maybe translate into uh, drag situations and drag soul usually the win conditions when you see them fighting comps or the comps that are more bot side oriented so both of these teams can be high enough to be And one thing I want to see from the is they draft these nice friends that pass Traditional names, Zach, but they failed to set up Drake properly. And when I said, I mean early enough to where they're not just dancing the river, they're actually getting out of control. And I need to see York University reporting to Dragon a bit earlier this game, or Miami University will take the reports for it and very much check them out. Right. And that comes down to having the lane set up, right? Because if you don't have your lane priority, you can't just walk into the jungle. You can't just put down wards. Otherwise, you'll be face checking into maybe a already ward set up for the enemy team. Like some more trades up in the top one here. Chicken delivery is really getting the advantage here over Lucent. I, what I really like about Gangplank is it's the barrel mini game. He has a barrel at his feet. Okay, if you want to go trade him, you need you risk him cracking the barrel and getting his passive stack on you. So you see it's a timing battle with barrels sometimes. And there's sometimes where I will all in a gameplay, I will lose that battle and if he's that and if I would have won it, and then I would kill him. And so because it comes down to this really small timing minigame, I think Gangplank is a really fun champion to uh, watch the trade patterns too. And as we see here, uh, Mayama Big D is back up in that top lane. They really want to pressure that Graves, that, that GP. Some trade damage coming into Luigi Mash from Troy One, and he's going to burn. Petrifying Gaze finds the stun onto Mayama Big D. The gank was thwarted. Well played from Luigi Mash here. Yeah, really well played. Did not have the flash, and that's uh, no win in its, in its summer. Just a bit ultimate, it's coming through, goes up to the top lane, gets the gold card down onto the GP. GP's gonna pop an orange to eat and get out. And that's first blood going over to Troy 1. He pops the ultimate to try to give himself a slow to get more distance over onto this Wukong, but Wukong is able to chase him down. You called it, Keck. It's basically picture perfect. You said, yeah, the orange is great into the TF gold card, but you have multiple knockouts on the Wukong. The engage threat is there, the setup is there, and chicken delivery goes down. On Gangplank to start this game off strong for Miami University. One thing I would have to say on behalf of York is Gangplank is a pretty decent champion, even with a death or two. As long as he's not getting power dove and losing mass waves, he, he can scale it into the game in, in most circumstances. And as we see here, he has a coal, 73 CS left on that coal. So, definitely chilling, so chilling.
He's not too concerned about the current game state, but... But Wukong with TNN, with early, with oh, man, I'm gonna pick these down in the ball lane. He, they have no vision of it, but Zack is here for the counter gank as well. Finds two knockups here. Elastic Slingshot is gonna find a stun on two, but here's Troy 1 with the gold card. Finds the stun and the kill onto Laser King here, and they're chasing down Aileros and Flare Pie. They're running for their lives, but Aileros has no flash. They have the timers down, and a gold card comes through. Mayama Big D is gonna secure the kill onto Aileros. And Troy is just getting everything. He just ported top and set up the easy kill, and now he's found bot lane, winning that situation where it looked like it could have been a really nice counter gank by Flare Pie in the bot lane, resulting in the death of Cleave, but when TF was first on the move, he just controls the situation with the gold card and wins it for Miami. And as you see here, Troy won. He's playing this really selfless style of mid lane. He's going, he's just trying to catch as many ways as he can, but reality, reality is he's prioritizing his side lane. He's going to help his Wukong. He's going down to help his Isonados. He wants to get his side lanes ahead. And what we need to see in response to Morgan Versus is on lead on Cassiopeia, which she does have a 9 CS lead. But this lead needs to grow into item advantages that can result in team fight wins. Otherwise, the TF uh, map pressure is just going to win the game outright because of the just the game IQ of everyone. Right. And here we see, like, even Nautilus is part of the whole roaming shenanigans. They're looking at the top side here. They're gonna, he's going to be seen by the minion. Cleve probably watching some worlds of supports are getting on the map as early as like four to six minutes uh, to impact their early situations. The skirmishing over the crabs and stuff, the jungle has been so important in the season 10 meta. Oh, and here's an all in coming in from Lucid. Pops the ultimate, gets the knockup first off. Chicken delivery is running for his life, but Mayama Big D is going to be there to secure the kill. And here we see Luigi Mash looking for an engage onto Troy 1, but Troy 1's just going to pop a gold card and run, run out of the way. Yeah, we're going all in is pretty simple. I want to say maybe even that he didn't need the Graves there. I think Chicken Livery may have been dead solo, but I'm sorry, Graves will come up. Secure that for him. Now we have Blades going over to Lucy. And all the stuff is nice. Yep. I think he just has to, because remember, this is what they opted for. GP is the weak side pick. He's a champion that's going to scale up to late game, get these items, and he's supposed to be a more relatively safe pick. He has the oranges to get out to CC. He can usually stay under his tower. Oh, but look at here, we have an Inbit coming in from Kaisen Nautilus onto Zack, onto Flare Pie here. Flare Pie thought, oh, not Inbit, this is an Inbit defense. Flare Pie's cellular division is going to be popped here, but the rest of his team is here to help him. But the blue buff, not going to be taken, but it's going to be secured by Kaisa. And here comes Flare Pie. He's going back in. Elastic Slingshot onto the Nautilus. Pops the stopwatch. My ass will coming down as well to stop him from escaping, but Luigi Match is going to secure the kill. Right, so with Graves dropping here on top, that means Flare Pie is comfortable enough to invade that blue side jungle where he runs into The big thing here is that York University just really wants to hit that mid slash late game power spikes. They have the Cassiopeia tier stack. They have the Ezreal tier stacks. Once they hit that late game team fights, they're going to have those, mass those increased stats from having stacking mana. They just are going to have to uh, avoid the multiple instances of engage from my enemy. You have the Nautilus hook is extremely long range, not to mention TF ultimate, Nautilus ultimate, Wukong ultimate. So many engaged tools here. We have the Graves is brewing with a farm lead who can carry team fights that start really well. And the AP damage from Kaisa and Twisted Fate to round out their comp uh, pretty nicely. Right. Now it all comes down to York to try to mitigate some of that aggression from Miami here. Miami has so many strong like, engaged tools, like you said, the Wukong ultimate, the TF ultimate. In fact, Miami Houston University also has insane hit with the TF ultimate. He can teleport anywhere. Drop a cold card, and if you're not ready for that, and they in Miami is coordinated to engage, you're probably just a dead champion. 
Definitely, and I think one thing to keep an eye on is going to be Aluros here on Lulu. Who does he polymorph him with? Uh, polymorph a huge spell when you're looking at champions like Wukong, champions like Kai'Sa that are going to make it, jump in, dash in, and then have a massive bonus impact. If you can polymorph Wukong on the engage, if you can polymorph Kai'Sa as she ulties in, you can really carry the fight with that single spell. It feels like minutes when you're uh, stuck as that little pixie guy do nothing. It's really an awful spell. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've been watching any of the world's games too much, but I, watching a lot of group C's games, just watching Genji play, watching LGD play, some of these things, oh, and look at this, we might have a 1v1 in the bot lane, but it looks like they're just, Laser King's just gonna Arcane Shift away. But what I was talking about with my point on the world's teams is that a lot of the teams are extremely punishing. A lot of teams are getting extremely punished by their side lane, how greedy some of these laners are. Oh, it looks like there's going to be an engage in the top lane, talking about greedy side laning. Yeah, and the flash will go down for Troy, so time that and try and revisit. But to your point, yeah, I think Gen G has just been like ruler on Senna, and then it, when the solo laners, when you get lane matchups that you can't get advantages on that you should on paper, your game can fall apart, and if you're facing uh, something like a Senna, it's a hard scale into the game. It means if you don't take advantage of the champions that you have, you're going to lose the game. Not to mention the global power that Senna does bring to the team. And in this, in this case, we have the Twisted Fate. The Twisted Fate can just ult him to any silent, and that, and it engaged correctly, they have a free pick right there. So York University, because they're behind, they have to be really smart with how they push out sidelines. And at the same time, Miami University, how we saw it just now, TF and uh, I believe Lucid as well on the Wukong also. Look at the Wukong careful. here, Kek. Watch as they dive this turret. I think Laser King is going to need some help from Lulu. Yeah, the Death Charge is going to find the knockup onto, onto Laser King, and that's going to be a killing spree going over to Mayama Big D. And they didn't even need the TF ultimate. They could have had five there. Drop the TF ult on top for anybody who was thinking they were going to say anything about that play, and they would be gone as well. So York University going to have to just bite the bullet there on that really nice rotation. What do you know, Kek? Drake up in just a minute here as uh, Blue Turret will be destroyed. That's the second turret of the game. Miami checking the boxes already here at 15 minutes, up 5k. And uh, the only thing York has to really uh, tout about is that Cloud Drake. And this will be the second? This is going to be the second Drake of the game. This Infernal Dragon's going over to Miami University, even though the first Dragon did go over to York. But this is just what it is, because Miami University currently has complete control of the game. They have complete tempo, their vision control is on point, you see wards all over the bottom side jungle coming in from Miami. And here's Troy1 on this, TF is just constantly sidelining, he's just pushing out waves, he has his ultimate to regroup with the team. And now, Miami are looking to break down the mid lane turret. It's the last tier 1 tower that's still up. Once this tower goes down, Miami as a whole can be extremely comfortable walking into the jungle of York. Exactly, that mid tower is definitely the point that they want to pressure here for the exact reason that you said. We already see Troy getting comfortable in that blue quadrant, but if that mid turret goes down, that centerpiece, that structure of defenses, it's going to be really easy for Miami to take control of the map, clear out vision. And once that happens, Kek, your Zac pick loses a lot of value. You need that control of your jungle, you need some fog of war to work with to really get value from that champion. And he looks to me like the solo engage for York. And if your Zac gets turned off because you can never play with Fog of War, you now have no engage and the game is entirely in Miami's hands. It's on them now to make a mistake right. uh, for you to even get into the game. And we haven't seen much of that in this entire league. And Lucid's looking for another aggression, aggressive all-in onto Chicken Delivery here. But Chicken Delivery, I'm telling you, man, Grasp is just a really powerful summer rune. It definitely is. Chicken Delivery wins the trades. Wukong wins the all-in if it's set up. Right, I guess, uh, but like I said, with the barrel mini games, it really is skill matchup to me in this case. But we all know Gangplank is happy to chunk you, hit his passive, shoot you on the way out, and eat an orange, and, and he's really tough to trade with. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that Miami are just so ahead. Graves is just soloing Rift Herald, and like, they don't really care. Ezreal ult, gonna look for their Herald, trying to steal, but Herald's still gonna be secured by the Graves here. And now we just see some side laning here. Next objective is not going to be spawned for another three minutes. So both, both planes are just looking to side lane, swarm up, get some items onto their carries, 
see a mid lane siege coming in from Miami University. Rift Hill is going to be dropped in the mid lane. What Finally going to break down that tier 1 tower. What do you do when you get uh, the outer turrets of the side lanes and heralds up and you need mid turret down? You go get the herald. The fact that there is not even a look of contest. Oh, and Cleve is going to find a Nautilus hook onto the Zac. And TF ultimate is going to be popped preemptively. They were looking for a dive, but after TF's seeing they disengaged, they're probably going to back off. But they don't know where that TF has ported into this bush here. He does a pink ward. Oh, and Miyama is looking for an engage onto Laser King. Pops the Ignite, drops the smoke screen, and the ultimate. Uh. That is rampage for Miyama Big D on this graves. He's doing so much damage this game. And now they're looking to dive chicken delivery. Ultimate coming in from Wukong finds double knockup. And he's just gonna get eviscerated. That was silky smooth by Miyama Big D, and then Lucent just manhandling the gangplank. He has the the help of his team, the support of the cast on Miami University, just relentlessly taking control of this red side quadrant, and that means that tier two goes down. And I think the Zach is now a non-factor in this game. I don't see him finding a surprise angle that doesn't just result in his death. Because when a champion that needs to use their body is the solo engage, uh, and you, there's going to be times where if he looks and you can't follow up, he's just diving into his death. So it's really hard to coordinate Zach as solo engage when you don't have Fog of War. And for that reason, I think Miami's going to close this game out uh, right. quickly. And just see that vision control in that bot side. Like, Chicken Delivery, he saw that his escrow got engaged on. The best thing he could do right there is to back off right away. But a lot of times, players feel like they're safe under the comfort of their tower. They think they're safe there. And unfortunately... Miami says, nope, you're not safe. We're coming for you right now, buddy. And unfortunately, Chicken Delivery is going to be was picked off as well. And now Chicken Delivery is up on this top side. He is just too far out. He feels safe with the comfort of Zach behind him, but the damage from Lucent is just so much. I don't think Chicken Delivery is, should be walking out this far. Not to mention, Chicken Delivery didn't even opt to buy a Ninja Tabbies. I was just going to say Tabby advantage right now for Lucent. I think if he had ulti there, he could have killed Chicken Delivery. Right. Not sure if he would have dropped ult and maybe hit a barrel and got some speed, but... As we keep tabs on this top lane matchup, it's obviously becoming more and more Wukong favor, but... Props to Chicken Delivery for keeping up and farm despite the pressure from the enemy team here that is Miami. And that's another thing I wanted to point out. Like Miami is just playing these side lanes so well. They know that they have they can punish York University whenever they try to push up from side lane as well. You see Chicken, you see Lucy just hiding in that tier, in that bush, in that middle of the lane, waiting for Chicken Delivery to overextend, and there he was. He overextended. And Kek, I want to ask you, when you watch Worlds games, like the disaster that was this morning, oh, man. we don't see teams really splitting the map 1-3-1 one, one as, as much as Miami does. I think it's because all teams know that they have to report to each Dragon and Herald. Why is York University giving these objectives here when they need to team fight? And when you look at the 1-3-1 one, one comp of Miami, they want to obviously split the map. And here we go, looking for another dive on the top lane, but Teleport's going to be burned from Luigi Mesh to deter this dive. And they're still going to fight. Gold Karma comes through, petrifying Gaze as well, but Troy 1 is just going to run out. And going off on what you were asking, Diddy, the thing is, in this scenario, York Esports are just so far behind. You see how weak their team is. Like you said earlier as well, like if Zach were to go all in on them, he would just die. Like he wouldn't be yeah. able to be that massive frontline that York University needs from him. Not to mention, Cassiopeia, she doesn't have her items yet. Ezreal, not that strong yet either. Sure, they finished their tiers, but they don't have that massive DPS to be able to match the, the damage coming in for Miami right now. Right. If anything, it would have to be the Cassiopeia on two items. She's the only really, the only member on her team really curving into the game. Ezreal's CS numbers are fine, but when your opposition is Kai'Sa, she's also stacking a tier of her own and uh, is really a monster champion at, at three items. But an all-in by Luigi Mesh. He's gonna pop loose. He's gonna have to pop the ultimate just to get out. And it, we see really calculated play from Miami. Their solo laners know when to run away. As we see Cleave, Spider Manning out of there. But yeah, the solo laners of Miami always know when they are getting moved on, right? They don't take those 1v1s. Like, Lucent is happy to just alt run away there. Uh, no problem. We saw Troy uh, flash away from a collapse earlier. They seem to kind of know their limits really well. And there's no punish on this split here from York. Well, for 
Miami University right now. They saw that Lucian will stop. They saw that Cassius will stop. So they saw this act in the mid lane. So yeah, Troy one feels perfectly fine just pushing out bot lane for free. The map is split, and we have jungle and support are on the top side, but Kaisa is in the bot side with TF, so a bit weird here, but she will report to mid. And a three-man start on Baron. This is a sneak, because look at Kaisa. She's in mid lane, showing herself. Uh, no one's doing Baron here. Uh, I'm the AD, and I'm not even there. Yeah, but looks like York University are not going to call the bluff. They see they are walking over. Ezreal is going to come through. They know for a fact that they, they are on the Baron. GP is going to pop his ultimate right now. And that's going to have to deter Miami University from this Baron. And now look TF. Because he used TP on top of ulti, TF now gets a look on the bot turret. He's going to chip some damage there. And Cleave looking for a Nautilus Q onto Laser King here, but he's going to have, he's going to miss slightly. Laser King, Arcane shifts for drops, lots of Mystic shots, and the Zac looking for an engage as well. Mamma Big D is going to be here to answer the aggression. Ultimate coming through, forces of cellular division. Teleport also coming in from Lucent here, and they're going to find the secure kill onto Flare Pie. Cleave with the, by IBM. the fight might continue, but Cleave nasty. Oh, go ahead, Kek. Flash forward coming in from Lucent. Finds the knockup onto Luigi Mass. Luigi Mass is going to have to force the petrifying gaze. Another stun going onto both Chicken Delivery and Laser King. And they're going to be thwarted here. They have to run for their lives. We can see some of the disengaged tools working in the favor of York University. They don't get absolutely trounced and run down there because they have Lulu as real units that can disengage. But beautiful interrupt by Cleave on the Zac E. You can't land that spell on Kaisa or Graves. They have dashes. Even if you find a target that you think you can land on, if Cleves there, he'll hook you out of the air. And the Zac pick just not working out. We saw he jumped in, went under turret, got dropped in a passive, and was picked up. We saw TF pressured bot uh, with the gang, made gangplank recall, match him, and then was able to port in. So despite GP having TP only a minute ago, he had to use it on Baron, could not go to that mid fight. Uh, a lot of little things adding up to a 1 for 0 in the mid lane. Great job by Cleve and the rest of the members of Miami. Right. And as we see here, like, this is just really feels bad for York, Univer York University here. And here's Troy One looking for some aggression, popping up the gold card, saying, Hey, come here. I have a, have a, little, have a little treat for you. And now Lucent is in the top lane, but the objective that everyone's looking at is Drake in 40 seconds. So if he shows top with no TP, this could be an angle that York use. If anything, you want Troy 1 in the top lane because he has the TP. But if you think Drake is free and you can get it with four members, then your Wukong can maybe roam around on the top side of the map. Not sure what the plan is for Miami. All right, Troy 1 gets the stun down onto Luigi Mash. His gold cards actually do quite a bit of damage. That Rapid Fire Cannon with the Lich Bane proc is actually quite a substantial amount of damage. And we see they're going to walk the Wukong down. He's in a, actually a pretty good spot. He's going to get behind a few of the members here. And it's a cheese. It's a cheese, but they might be surrounding themselves with Miami members here. It all comes down to this play, I think. Oh, and the Twisted Fate ultimate is going to come through. So they're this found whole cheese out. play means nothing against they're surrounded. the Twisted Fate ult. And so now they are being corralled in this mid lane right here. But Lucid's also in a bad spot. Okay, Cleve is looking for an engagement. Wukong. Flash ultimate coming through. Naka finding multiple members. The last six is trying to find some knockbacks back as well, but looking like this fight's just going to be disengaged. Alaros is going to have to burn the ultimate from Lulu to get them dissuaded from this fight. Your, get, your disengage is there for York University. It's kind of hard for... Wait. Yeah, they're looking for some cheese in the uh, in the uh, bush here. Some damage coming up from Troy 1. Gold card into the wild cards. Quite a bit of damage. And Miami is going to secure the third dragon of the game. Second Ocean Soul. And... Not Ocean Soul, second Ocean Dragon, and gonna be Ocean Soul Point for that, Miami University. That's the thing, Keck. The takeaway from the game until this point is Miami doesn't have to kill you to win the game. They would just take everything because they were they're gonna find you out, they're gonna force you away, and take the neutrals. You can't spot up fight them because you can't lock any of them down because Zach is not in fact effective solo engage from behind. And I think for this reason, Miami's just going to be able to run objectives. Yeah, it's hard to kill some of the members on York University with the Lulu disengage, the Ezreal maneuverability, but they don't need to kill them at this point in the game. Oh, and Luz is looking for an engage onto Laser King here. He's going to be polymorphed by Eloros, and Laser King getting some return damage, but that invisibility dash Nimbus Strike does quite a bit of damage, and Laser King's hand has to back off here. And it's the Baron game now. No Drake for four minutes. So I believe Miami University can set up and play Baron for four minutes with the luxury of being able to fall back on the Ocean Soul if that's what they 
uh, decide to get. And once once they get either Baron or Soul, they can start to look to be insanely aggressive on the dives here to actually look for some frags to lead into some uh, structure kills. But like I was just saying a second ago, there's no rush on that. They can farm their Kai'Sa, who is three items. Uh, they can farm their Graves even more, who is about to 100 CS gap. He's going to Flame Horizon Flare Fire any minute here. They can just build on these advantages and take neutrals. There's uh, no rush for Miami. Oh, and here's the Baron already down to 2600 HP. Okay, Flare Pass going in for this, trying to go for a steal, but Miami Big D is going to secure the kill. Nautilus is having to go down. Petrifying Gates finds a stun onto, onto IBN here. IBN is going to have to use the Void Assault to escape. And Knockouts coming in from Lucent on this Wukong finds the damage onto so many members of York University. GP is going to be burned GP's down. GP coming to help. Laser King is going to have the Arcane Shift and Flash out. Here's GP. He's going to set up the barrels, but Troy One's on the flank. They had complete vision of the team, and Lucent's going to keep going. He's going for the Nimbus Strike. Finds the stun, goes invisible, almost going to get blocked out here. Gold Carp finds the stun onto Chicken Delivery. Laser King with the kiting, with the ultimate, and he's going to get taken down by Troy One. The pursuit from Miami, the kiting from New York. That was a really crazy series of play, but at the end of the day. Baron going over to Miami University and the fight that followed goes in their favor as well. Uh, the chase down percent potential and we saw a lot of gold cards coming in. These gold cards in these situations are so crucial. We see this one gets orange by Gangplank but Ezreal, they got Wukong low here, not hitting the mark on Troy here and he gets another, I, was that a rapid fire auto? Because, I think that was a rapid fire. Man, that auto. range. Uh, when you... TF with four items in a skirmish controls so much space with that gold card. If you don't have a cleanse, a QSS, you can't really fight into the TF. That's true. You see, like, York University, sure they have opted for this full late game scaling team composition, but Miami University, their comp skill is pretty hard too. They might not be the full on late game team fight that you see Cassiopeia being in. But they have damage as well, and they can fight back pretty hard. Yeah, I think you pointed out the major gap in, in terms of scaling between the two concepts. We see Troy uh, running down this Cassiopeia, trying to bait the ulti and turn away. He's going to have to pop the Twisted Fate ultimate as well. Petrifying Gaze trying to get the stun. Stun from the gold card. Luce is going to get a killing spray with a teleport. And here's the... I begin with Kaisa ultimate looking for an engage onto the Ezreal here, but she's going to back off. Side steps to Zach. Elastic slingshot. And the rest of Miami University are chasing down the their foes of... York University in that mid lane. And here, Troy One is taking down the bot lane in hip turret and he's working on the in hip. Gold card coming through, looking for a start onto Ayla Rose's Lulu, but not Ooh. quite able to find the mark. But the in hip is going to be secured by Miami. First in hip of the series. And Keck, this game, from the very moment it started, from that invade, Graves getting ahead early, the flash they got on GP, it has just been a steamroll and a snowball for Miami where. Everything that York gets is is answered by pressure and and cross map play by Miami, and it's starting to look optionless here for York University. Not to mention the mid lane inhibit is going to go down for Miami University as well. Ocean Dragon is going to spawn in the next 40 seconds. I'm honestly I'm looking at Miami University to just reset, play for that free Ocean Soul, and look to close out the game from there. Looking at the jungle levels, Mayama Big D is up three levels. Wait a sec. Mayama Big D seems to be a bit overextended. No flash on that champion, remember. He just has Ignite. Is this York University's window to get back in the game? Or is... But Cleve is looking for an engage on Z and Flare by here. But look at look at the rest of the members of Miami University. They see that York University wants to go for this Ocean Dragon to deny the soul. But you look at the soul leaders of Miami. They're still pushing. They look make you pay. The game. Lucid is on the inhib tower. Here comes the twist of fate ultimate as well. They're looking to back door. It's a back door play. Now you just have to stop the backs and then there's only Cassiopeia to stop you. That's game. That is game. That's gonna be. And from the back door from the solo leaders of Miami University, they are gonna take game one in the series. Miami University is gonna be up 1-0. And I feel like I have a flashback of